everybody, and welcome to those of you that were here Friday to hear Tabitha speak. Welcome back. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kyle Hoogan. I'm a senior here at Shenandoah. I uh, am the head mentor for first year seminar, and I also mentor the class, You Don't Have to Be Gandhi. Is what people are yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, if you're sitting in your seat right now and you're looking at my face, and you're like, I know that came from somewhere, but I don't know where. Um, it is probably from summer orientation. I did the FYS presentation at all the orientation dates this summer. Um, if you were actively listening to me during that presentation, uh, didn't have your face in your phone, um, you may recall me talking quite a bit about an organization uh, that's very important to me and very important to uh, FYS at Shenandoah. And that is the Nyaka AIDS Orphans Project um, and their founder, Jackson Gary, who we have here with us today. Um, Jackson uh, has been a big part of the FYS experience at Shenandoah for a long time now. He started coming here about 10 years ago or so, uh, so that means the majority of the people in this room right now were in elementary school, second, third, fourth grade when Jackson made his Shenandoah debut. Uh, so he's been doing this for a long time now and we know we're very, very lucky to have had him for so long. Um, and to recognize how lucky we are, uh, Jackson was awarded a few years ago with his uh, honorary doctorate from Shenandoah University, um, which is very cool. Uh, he will tell you that is his most illustrious award, of course, being that it came from Shenandoah. Um, but uh, just uh, a couple off um, the top of my head, a couple organizations that have recognized Jackson. Um, it's been recognized by the United Nations for the work that he's done. He was a 2012 CNN hero. Also believe met a handful of United States presidents, three, four, if I remember correctly. Um, so this is a guy that's made a really big impact on the world and has been recognized for doing so. Um, so just to give you a little bit of Jackson's background, uh, if you haven't done your um, homework, uh, Jackson was born and raised in rural Uganda. I won't spoil too much of his story, I'll let him uh, handle that. But he was born and raised in rural Uganda, was fortunate enough to get an education. Um, education costs money in Uganda, and that's an expense that a lot of families are not able to afford. Um, so Jackson made his way through school, uh, went to a university in Uganda, um, graduated, went to the United States, um, got his master's from Columbia. Um, and throughout this entire process, being away from home, he still maintained, like a lot of us do, a very strong connection to his home. And what he recognized was that there was a problem in his community. Number one, that kids did not have access to an affordable education. And uh, number two, that that problem was being exacerbated by the fact that a lot of kids are losing their parents to the HIV AIDS epidemic. Um, so how did Jackson respond to that? Well, he responded by building a tuition free school for AIDS orphans in his village. Um, started as a small schoolhouse and has blossomed into so, so, so much more over the past years. Um, and I'm really excited for you to hear him talk a little bit more about that today. Uh, my experience with Jackson, um, this is the fourth time I've heard him speak. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to hear him every year I've been at Shenandoah. Uh, every time I hear him speak, I cling to every word. I'm, it's by far the most impactful speaker I've ever uh, had the pleasure of listening to. Um, and I'm captivated by every everything he has to say every time he comes here. Um, my sophomore year when I heard him speak, I was fortunate enough to learn about an opportunity to travel to Uganda and work with Nyaka firsthand. Uh, and it was everything I could have ever dreamed of. Um, it gave me just a brand new, incredible appreciation for um, everything that this organization does, how far reaching this organization is, it touches the lives of thousands of people um, in Uganda and all across the world. Um, so I'm really, really excited for you to get a chance to hear him speak. And uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and stop talking. I'm going to hand the mic over to Dr. Jackson Kaguri. So. Wow. I could have stayed seated and let Cairo keep going. Then you guys can ask me questions and we leave. <laughs> Wonderful introduction. Thank you. Shenandoah, you are hornets, right? Yes. Hello, Shenandoah hornets. Hello. Have you learned the hornet song? No? Okay. I won't teach you. I will talk to your president, and maybe she will teach you. What I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, it is an honor to be speaking here for many years. I've spoken since you were in elementary school but I'm still 25. <laughs> I don't grow, I stay where I am. A great honor to come back here and speak to you. Some of you met my wife when she spoke last Friday. 
what I'm going to do today is take you on a trip to Uganda. You don't have to get on a plane, but I'm going to transport you. We will go to a tiny village where I was born and raised. You meet some people there. We'll wrap it down on what we do and why we do it. Maybe you have time to ask me questions. Maybe not because I talk too much. But at the end of the day, you learn one thing, that one person can make a difference in this world. And today it's not that person standing in front of you because I've already done my thing. It's you. You are seated here because you've been chosen to come to this amazing university. And what I want you to get out of my speech today is that no matter what circumstances you are going through, there's something out there for you and the world is waiting on you to do it. So this is me. We are going to start with the video because teenagers love videos. Education breaks barriers of poverty. My mother and my dad raised five of us going to school and they struggled because they didn't have any money to pay for us. My dad would buy one pencil and divide it five times so each of us could get a piece. Because I had a fifth of a pencil, I ended up at Columbia University. That's what opened my eyes. I knew what were my obstacles as a child to get education. We built two primary schools and a secondary and vocational school. You don't have money, you can't pay for it, so we made it free. So our kids get uniform, pencils, and pens, and their pencils have erasers. I never had an eraser. A kid is sick, we built a clinic so we can address that. Girls have no sanitary products, we have them and provide them for free. There is no place to read a book or find a book. We built libraries. If kids are dehydrated, they cannot concentrate. So we built a clean water system for the entire community. The grandmother's program was started in 2006. We asked grandmothers to house students. They were scared of economic consequences. When they need uniform, what am I going to do? When they get sick, what am I going to do? And all our answers is, need uniform, we'll give it to you. Medication, we'll give it to you. Clean water, we'll give it to you. These children have gone through traumatic experiences. They have seen their dads and moms die. We want somebody in the house who they can go to when they are scared. So today we have 7,314 grandmothers taking care of 43,000 orphan children. Nyaka has taken all those barriers and broken them down so our children can succeed. That's the point where you will all clap and say, Yay! <laughs> all cry and ask for a tissue. Either way. Uh oh. <laughs> I was about to dance. All right, no dancing for me. So, ladies and gentlemen, when you come to these lectures, they tell you to put away your phones. If you have your phone, that is the Instagram follow. If I finish talking and you don't like what I said, unfollow me. It won't hurt my feelings. But that's the Instagram, the Amatrice J. Jackson Kaguri. Since Kyle talked about me, I can talk about him. This man is so smart. When my wife showed up, look how beautiful she is. <laughs> she was here on Friday, and Kyle grabbed the picture so quickly. This is my beautiful lady, the most beautiful woman you have ever met. And she's married to me. <laughs> what I will tell you about this picture is Mr. Kaguri, Dr. Kaguri does not give up. The moment I asked her to marry me, she said no. <laughs> said okay. <laughs> Four children later, <laughs> mine, <laughs> ours. Kai also told you, so we can establish credentials here, CNN here, I'm going to brag right now, a boy from the village 
no running water, no pencils, and here we are. Doctorate from Shenandoah. The best doctorate anybody can ever get. CNN here. There I am with your president. Have you met your president? The coolest president I've ever met. And very smart, visionary. Every girl in the world needs to look at what Tracy is doing at this university. And know that dreams can come true. 1950s, there was no woman president for any college. And there I am doing my thing. <laughs> and there I am getting another doctorate. And there I am with my books which are outside. Please buy a book when you go outside. Rather than spend your money on beer, it will be best spent on a book. And I have children books, send them to where you went, to your elementary school. And the newest book is, this always happens to me. Uh, uh, uh. It does, Jenna, all the time. Can I press the button? Yeah, you can press it. Uh, okay, start over. <laughs> There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. And it's stuck right here. Some reason. Technology! We need help. There's a picture in there that is a PDF file. I think it's the one that causes the issue. So maybe if I skip it yeah. and go there, we might be okay. I love my woman so much, I show her so many different places. There we are. That's our family. We have four children. Talia Tessa are twins. Noran, they follow. My wife and I, we read to our children every single day, mainly because I never read as a child. And I want to raise a generation of readers. That's our firstborn, Nicholas Kaguri, 17 years old. The girls are going, what's his number? I don't give away his number. Handsome young man, proud of him. He will be in college next year. Maybe he'll end up at Shenandoah, we don't know. But he's a great young man. They are my babies, young ones. And there we are in Nyaka. We teach our children to give back time, resources, and they travel every year with us to go see what we do. I told you I'm going to take you to Uganda. Since you are in college, you already know that Africa is not a country. But for purposes of my talk, please repeat after me. Africa, Africa is, not is not a country. A country. Since you are near D.C., you need to learn that and repeat it on your streets. So maybe somebody will learn that this continent has 52 countries. Each of the countries are independent and autonomous with their own presidents, their own language, and their own currency. Many people in this country, the greatest country in the world, don't know that. So when I worked at Columbia University, everyone would say, oh, he's African. They still call me African, just like me referring to you as just American. This is my beautiful country, Uganda. Those who have traveled, when you get to Uganda, you land at an airport in Kampala. Yes, there is an airport and planes land there. Because somebody asked me, how do you come to United States? I said, take a plane. How? <laughs> planes land in your country? Like, yeah? Really? Yes. 2019, people don't know that. You have Cairo now as a witness. You have Kara as a witness, you have Professor Amesach, you have Jenna, you have Ben. They are going to go, they will land here, they will drive here 10 hours to the village where I was born and raised. And you can say I am so traditional, I had a clicker here, but I rather touch. <laughs> right here is where my story begins, where I was born and raised. Those 10 hours, ladies and gentlemen, they will take you through a metamorphosis science word metamorphosis the changes that happen from the capital city here when you land in uganda the children and young people like you are not going to be different they love to watch videos they have the latest music the cars are fast 
the BMWs are there, the Range Rovers are there, right here in Kampala, and the skyscrapers are also there. But as you drive out of Kampala, 10 hours later, you land in my village. Here is where I was born and raised. In many talks, I would put a picture of my mother and my father and show them to you until one visitor went and told my father, Jackson has been talking about you to strangers. He said, son, I don't want my picture to be seen by all those people where you go to speak. Please stop doing it. I said, yes, dad. Now I show you the landscape. The landscape of this area, this is on top of the mountains. For a typical child, your brother or when you are growing up, they would have to go from that mountain and go on the bottom of the river, get their water, take it back home, and then walk to school. So since we are in education, when I take visitors, I make them climb down that river, and many of them never finish the two-hour hike. The children wake up in the morning, do the two-hour hike, bring water home, and then run to school. And my school when I was growing up was seven and a half miles, not kilometers, every single day. When I came to this country, I told myself I will never run again because I've run all the miles I needed to run. Guess what? I'm running New York Marathon on November 3rd. One and one time only for the sake of Nyaka children so we can raise money for them. And I'm not training as much because I know I can do it. I did it for 20 years and I can do it when I'm 40. Nine. When you are going to school, the roads are going to look like this. But for your purposes of explanation, I'm going to use these two friends. She's from Maryland, the Seseda. She's from Nyaka village. She comes to visit and goes, I want to go visit my friend after school. And we go, you want to go visit your friend? Yes. She goes to her mom, who is a medical doctor. Her mom packs a backpack, puts in wipes puts in sun screen, puts in extra bandage, extra pink socks, she puts on her sneakers, and she starts walking with her friend who is Nyaka student, no sunscreen, no backpack, no pink socks. And they are walking all the way to the house, which should be, see that's why I'm not using it, all the way there in the bushes seven and a half miles. They are halfway going and a car, I believe it was a van that had brought the mother to the village, passes by and dust came sweeping on the two children. Zoe, not Zoe, she's not Zoe, I forgot her name. Loxy, Loxy falls down, sand in her eyes, she can't see where she is, the next thing is a big cry. God, what am I going to do? Her friend here didn't even fall down, just closed her eyes, the car passes. She says, let's go. Because she's grown in circumstances and walks every day, she knows when something like that happens, you close your eyes. Because Loxie has never experienced something like this, her was see which car is it, what brand it is, where is it going to go, so her sun covered her eyes. When you take a trip, Kyle, or anybody who travels, when you get there, the expert is the person who lives in the circumstances where you are going. Leave your Americanism behind, your degrees, your dad's money and computers and cars, it does not help you when a car comes zooming down the road. For once, listen to the local. Shelby knows this, right? The grandmothers can make food for you in a quick minute using fire when it is raining. You can't do that because you are using it to your stove. Chai, shh, gas. <sighs> Breakfast is ready. So please, that's one lesson. The second lesson is because of that experience, Loxy and this girl are friends forever. She doesn't have to wait until she's in college. 
like you to get the experience of what it means and how to value another life that is the same as yours. The children here are not them and you are not this. We are all human, same instincts, same feelings, same dreams, and that's what I'm going to take you into. The man who wakes up every morning, this is a friend of mine whose picture I've used so many times and I've told him I use your picture. Because when people think of people who are poor economically, they think those people are lazy. And I'm here to tell you, nobody in my village is lazy. That man rents a bicycle, goes to another man's farm, carries bananas every single day, and when he brings money back, he pays school fees, tuition, for his children to go to school. His dream and your mom and dad's dream are not different. Only difference here, your dad goes on a computer, choo, transaction goes, money comes in, retirement is set, 401k, car for money, mortgage is there. He sweats every single day. But his dream is the same. He wants to see his children go to school. He wants to see them graduate. He wants to see them get married one day and walk down the aisle. And he will die a happy man. Even with HIV AIDS, people are still working so hard. And because I knew how people work so hard, when I finished my education through primary school, and I'm after Columbia University, I looked back at the community that made me the man I became and wanted to do something. I said, the best thing I can do is provide education. There's a quote by Nelson Mandela, I'll not read for you because you're in college, you know how to read, go, done. When I was growing up as a kid, you saw this in the video, my father and my mother were so poor they could not afford to buy a pencil for all five children. So as a kid, mom and dad knew that when you show up at school and you don't have a pencil, the teacher would send you home to go buy a pencil. And many times, a dream for education for many children ended because their parents could not afford a pencil. Now, Shenandoah being a wonderful institution, you know that people who can't read and write are called illiterates, right? Right? Yes. Say yes. The word illiterate means a person who can't read and write. But do you know the catch? The person who can't read and write English. Mom and dad can read and write Ruchiga, which is my language, but in a classroom at Shenandoah, you call them illiterate. The word illiterate in my language means stupid. So in a way, if I had to tell my mom what you guys call them, I will say they call you stupid. And I teach my children never to say stupid. I have told my mom and dad, you are my geniuses. Geniuses, not because they paid for my education, because they figured out a formula how to send five children to school using one pencil. As a child, my dad and mom would buy one pencil and line us in front of our small house and break it. One for Jackson, one for Fida, one for Christine, one for Mbabazi, the one with a razor for my oldest brother, Frank. For a man and a woman who have never been to school to figure out that if one pencil would divide in two five, and if you go to school and you have that little pencil, the teacher will never send you home. Where's your pencil? Right here. Okay, keep going. For 20 years of my education, I never had a razor. And so I learned how to write very carefully without using spell check, you guys using your computer, or rubbing like you do when you write a bad sentence. That's why I'm an author of five books today. My mom and dad were the geniuses that figured out that formula that kept me in school. So anytime you think, I can't make a difference in the world, 
I am so in Shenandoah. My parents don't have money. I want you to remember, Dr. Kaguri went to school because of one pencil, a fifth of a pencil. And when you think you can't make a difference in the world, I want you to know that in 2019, a child in rural Uganda or in Nicaragua or in India will still drop out of school today because they don't have a fifth of a pencil. So look in your bags. Find how many pencils you have. Divide them by five. And that's the difference you can make in the world today. See, I told you, you are the one who have the power. So what I'm going to do now that you know that a pencil can make a difference, I went back to my village and I gathered the people. I said, let's build a school and boom. We built this school 18 years ago, two-roomed school. I went to the teacher who had taught me as a child and kept me in school and hired her to become my teacher. And she went and started teaching again, modeling and looking after these children. This school ended up being a title for my best-selling book, not according to New York Times, according to Jackson Kaguri. The best-seller book in the world has that picture on the cover and is the book that introduced me to this university. Your first year students, 10 years ago, nine years ago, read my book and Professor Any Search invited me and she has invited me every year. Please invite me again next year, making an advertisement. But that is the school that broke the poverty concept in our village and got children, regardless where they had mom or dad, to start looking at something beyond their circumstances. So we recruited students. And that school looks now like this. Now I'm going to teach you how you are going to respond during this speech. Wow! Aha! Uh -huh. You look at this. When I go, this is the, how it looks now. You are going, wow! Not because you are impressed but because of what I'm going to share with you. This has become the beacon of hope and education for these children. Now it looks like that. And guess who travels there? All the way from Shenandoah University, ladies and gentlemen, people travel from near Washington, D.C. to go pose for one picture in my village. Aha. Uh -huh. What did we practice? Wow! There is your faculty and the students who went last year donned in Yaka t-shirts going to the village that was not, still does not show on Google map. That is transformation. One man, one dream, one man you call illiterate and his wife who still live there invested in a fifth of a pencil and now your president sends a delegation to my village. Wow. wow. You're a tough crowd. <laughs> <laughs> the children who begin in our schools are as young as five years old. The children begin in nursery school. Every student I'm going to show you started as a nursery school child. When you look at this picture, I want you to erase the picture in your head of an orphan in Africa. I want you to erase what New York Times and CNN, here, CNN shows you in media of dying African children with flies flying from their mouth and their mother can't feed them anymore and they are dead on the side of the streets. I want you to think of human beings who lose teeth, just like your baby brothers and sisters who breathe and want candy just like you like candy Though they have never had an orphan, you give them a cake. They go for a cake before broccoli. Human, breathing, children. I do not understand why a person goes from New York City and goes to Southern Sudan and leave all the pictures they could take and only take dead bodies and dying people. I don't. I do not understand why an organization would put children who are starving to raise money and then turn around and put Shenandoah students smiling going to the library posing with the president to raise money. So I said no. 
our children will be smiling, they will be playing with soccer balls, they will be in their uniforms, they will be in white socks, they will play drums, they will be happy, they will smile. I will never show you a picture of a sad child. Because at the end of the day, when they are in university like you, they want to look back and say, Oh, it's me. Ha ha. Now I'm at university. You don't want them to see their picture and say, I don't know who that person was. Because you took their picture when they were naked. So when Kyrie is there, he gets his instructions, take pictures of children, prepare them. If they don't have the jacket, take off yours. After all, you have 20 back home and give them a picture, a, a jacket before you take their picture. That's what Cairo did. You listen good. Smile big, take your picture, look at these children and go to the elementary school where you went to school. They are not as happy as these orphans. What's missing? Their lives are empty. Mom and dad wake up every morning, drop them to the daycare. The grandpa and grandma live in somewhere where you sh ship all the people. The kids here are living with grandma, where the grandma is hurting. They are eating good food, they don't eat McDonald's, the food is all good and healthy, and when they receive a visitor, they enjoy it. Empowerment is what we are going after, not misery. And there is your vice provost and her daughter Zoe, Shenandoah represented, and here is how these children walk to school. I built the first school with purple uniforms. Several years later, a boy walked for 50 miles looking to be in school. He came to Nyaka school and they told me about it. I said, I'm going to build another school. And everyone told me, no, you can't. Remember, my wife said no. I married her anyway. They told me I can't build that school. Bam. Wow. This is the best school built in the best hills I hired an architect from San Francisco, USA. Went to Uganda and lived there and worked for me. You know what the people did? Each time he would go to eat, I would go out to eat with him, they would give him a beer thinking because he's white, he's my boss, while I employed him. It's not just here where things happen, they also happen there because we have taken so long time without attack, uh, looking at things properly. But this is one of the premier primary schools in the community that has children, hopeful, a picture taken by then a drone. Remember the village has no electricity, it has no power, but we want people to project what is to come later rather than what they have gone through and we take drones, we take pictures, we come show them to you, we go in the classroom, we give them sweaters. If you know where I live, I live in Michigan, near Michigan State University. When I built this school, I was working at Michigan State University and somebody falsely accused me that green and white, which are the colors of Michigan State, I was copying. The kids choose their own uniform and they call their school Kutamba, which means healing. And because healing comes from plants in Uganda, they chose their own uniform. So Michigan State owes me a scholarship <laughs> for kids wearing their colors. But look at them. Again, wow. Say it loud. Wow. Orphaned every single one of them. Happier than you. None of these kids go, I'm not going to go there, right? They are happy. They enjoy themselves. They walk every single day. So after education, we said anything is possible if you, if you go to what? You only use that when you are cursing somebody or you are mad at You have enough. Now you can use it in a positive way. The children who have gone to our schools have gone from this barefoot. This is the only picture you're going to see with the children barefoot because this is pre-Nyaka. The guy you see right here is this guy right here. He's gone from zero, nothing, often nothing, to giving his speech at his high school school, at his high school. You've met him. 
He's now a medical doctor. Oh my God! One zero to high school to doctor. That's one of them. Check out another one. From zero to lawyer. She just graduated with her law degree. Isn't she pretty? Boys, you want the number? You have to follow me on Instagram. <laughs> there is another doctor. Second one who graduated from the other school. And I'm going to tell you a story. There is Dennis, the favorite of Shenandoah visitors, with his degree in Bachelor's of Finance. You are first year students. You are going to graduate. You are going to do amazing things because your level has already been paved. These kids lived in houses with grandmothers where it leaks at night and they have still made it. These three examples I'm giving you are children who have never taken a music lesson, have never taken a sports activity, have never gone camping, they don't know what piano is, they've never been in a car, they don't have a cell phone, they don't have a house, they don't have a bed sheet, they didn't know what a pillow is, they still made it. So I have no sympathy for you if you fail your first year curriculum. Zero. I tell my son, 17 year old, I say, I have no sympathy. You drive my car, you get gas, you sleep in a big house, you have lights. These kids have done it. You can't compare and go in medical school, but what this means is you have it in you. God created you with something in you to accomplish what you want. What stands between you and that accomplishment is you. They chose to pursue and they did it. One of them, this picture was so hard to put in here. It is Brary, he sent it to me on the phone. This is Huntington who graduated with that class I just showed you and became a driver. He's now officially married. When he finished his elementary school, he went in a driving school. He learned how to drive, not because he couldn't continue, but he wanted to make money quickly so he can build his mother a house. He became a driver, we employed her, he has driven so many visitors, then as he was getting ready to get married, his mom passed away. After he had built a house and bought two motorcycles, scooters, to use as border border. He sold two border borders, gave his mom the best burial you can think of, and then went and paid bride price and got married. Wow. Uh huh. And now, yeah, 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 not impressed. You'll be impressed at the end. Transformation is what? We've been on that transformation with the children. Every four children I've shown you grew up in a house like this. We put them in houses like this as soon as they began in Yaka by going into the community and build a house for a grandmother. The difference here is to change this grass to iron sheet. One time we were building one of these houses, as soon as we finished building the toilet, the toilet is a different house from the main house, rain came and took down the grandmother's house. This fell. She slept in the toilet for a whole week as we built this house. An outside house with a hole in it is the toilet I'm talking about. So the transformation we've done in the community is not only for children, it's also for entire community. So here we go. We built houses like this, 700. Every house we finish has a grandmother who is so hopeful, so happy. Many of them are too old to work, so we do that. And we introduce the word selfie with these grandmothers. A grandmother's house is done, what they do is take a selfie. When you forget to do these pictures, these grandmothers who cannot speak English, they remind you that thing they called selfie. And we take those pictures and give it to them, they hang it on their wall. The grandmothers are now working with Shenandoah University. Check her out. Never went to college. Donning a t-shirt 
all the way from the president to the grandmother in the village. That t-shirt is a huge possession for that woman. Even if you come to steal all the money, you can take the money, you can take the t-shirt. There they are, working with grandmothers so we can start telling stories, document them, use them in your classroom to learn how differences can be made and how to economically empower women. But before Shenandoah came in, we had already figured out that these women know how to make baskets and because they know how to make baskets, we would give them little money called microfinance. They buy materials and make baskets. Every woman in the village knows how to make a basket, so that was not revolutionary. What was revolutionary, we told them, as soon as you finish a basket, Nyaka organization will buy the basket from you, that way you get income, and then we bring those baskets, Shenandoah, to your church, to Washington, D.C. So as you walk out there, you are going to be baskets being sold, made with love, from grandmothers. I know first year students are not thinking baskets, but just buy one. Throw it in the trash if you don't want, but that money would have gone to the grandmother, and for her it is life and death. They also make beads, jewelry. So I went and told these women, American women change their clothes every day. They are going, what? Like, yep, yeah, they will change from blue to black, and when they change, they change the jewelry, they change the beads. So if you make these beads in multiple colors, they will wear them in my Cairo, stand up for a minute, please. Turn around and model that bead. See that? Can't even get it at messes. Made by grandmothers of Nyaka out of paper. They take newspapers that their children have read at school, fold them, paint them, make colors and make these beads so you can consume them. And because everyone knows how to make them, there's no market, so we buy them and send them all over the world. They give a speech, we sell those. And these women end up, she's wearing her bead, can you see it up there? These women end up having eye problems. So we are making an appeal to all of you, if you wear glasses, or your mom wear glasses, or your dad wear glasses, when they change glasses, bring them a drop in the box. We we'll take them to these grandmothers so they can continue making baskets. Ladies and gentlemen, Nyaka is taking care. In the video, you had 7,000. Now there are 10,000 women wow. raising 60,000 children. Wow. Find me an organization. This is your homework that will have that impact, apart from World Vision, UNICEF, Save the Children. Zero in the whole world. 10,000 women raising 60,000 women, 60,000 children, and these women asked me they wanted a uniform. They want to be different. They want to walk with pride. They have a chairperson. They have a treasurer. They have, the committee is all women. No, none of them are checking time here. None of them are men in this community. I'm going to run through the rest of the programs because I can see you getting agitated. You need to leave. So these are the women. They become business women. These are the women. They are so generous. When you come as a visitor, they will give you chicken. You can see your vice provost scared of a chicken that they will give you gifts. These are the women who have been, whose lives have been transformed through the next programs. Health care is a right. They don't have it. We went in, we built a health care clinic from scratch to a full-fledged health care center. Clean water. You drink this water, if you don't have running water, we changed it. Those are my girls practicing what other girls their age do. Carry that, those are empty by the way, before you accuse them of child labor. <laughs> That's how they carry water. We built clean water system. We produced spots. We have worked with disabled children who are physically or mentally disabled and still are often, we give them the opportunities to get up. Instead of praying with these balls, any soccer prayers here? 
That's what you pray with if you are in my village, my man. You make your own ball, you become innovative, it breaks, you fix it. We've introduced them to real soccer. They can take a shower, they can play basketball, they can read because we have built a community library. Books, books, kindles, they can farm and raise their own food. There is food, there is food, there is food, loved by your Shenandoah. Jackfruit is your favorite, right there. There is food we harvest, we bring it on the table, every child gets to eat because there is food. But we also realized we cannot do this work without tackling gender-based violence. That's what my wife talked about. There is beautiful even in the back. Ah, gender-based violence, we have attracted more numbers in this area, more than when the president shows up to educate people. They are the numbers. And then we said we can't just do this, we are going to dream big. Big, bad, cool. We started building the biggest, baddest school in the community. We employed 7,000 people and... Wow. Wow. Vocational school so children can learn skills. 3D printers so they can learn how to print. Tailoring so they can learn how to do it. And there are models again. Cairo donning one of the ties made by these children in this community. So their ties are coming to San Diego, uh, not San Diego, Shenandoah. Here are the kids learning how to build, here are the laboratories they learn, here are the pictures they draw, and we wouldn't do all this without our dear volunteers who are coming from all over the world. Uh, again, I must love Shenandoah for some reason. <laughs> again, there is a conference that one of your professors sent me to Tanzania, there is uh, Zoe with children she adopted. They are the children. They are the children. They are the children. There is my son teaching music. They are the children. They are volunteers as young as five years. After her eyes cleared up from the dust, she started teaching her friends how to use a computer because they have never used a computer. What can you do? Can raise awareness. You can start Friends of Nyaka, which is already here. The model already told you. You can sign up out there. You can buy a book. You can share. You can read Cornerstone. My speeches all over the world are not to make you followers of Nyaka. It is to create more readers. So proud of Kyle who had me and became a leader. So proud of you who are already leaders because that's why Shenandoah chose you. And I know you will do good. I thank you. I appreciate you. I wish you all the best at Shenandoah. And if you have a burning question, this would be the time to ask the question. Thank you. <laughs>